In this video, we will understand how to figure out the area under a curved VT graph. So for this case, let's say we want to figure out the area between the time limits TI and TF and we want to figure out all of all of this shaded blue area. We know that the area under a VT graph that gives us the displacement of the object in motion. So all of this blue shaded area that gives us the displacement of this object that is moving that is in that is in motion. And we have already calculated areas under a VT graph. We, uh, but in those cases, we calculated the area of a rectangle or a triangle, and that gave us a displacement of the object. Now here, it is neither a rectangle or a triangle or a square in this one. So how do we do it? How do we get the area of this shaded part? Well, we can get better and better approximations for it. And one way of doing that is we can divide this area into sections, into sections of of delta t's and it does not matter if you make equal equal sections or sections of different width or of equal width let's just say let's just say we divide this we divide this into 10 sections of equal width so when we do that this is how it can look like we have and and all of these widths they are delta t so we can say that this is delta t1 this right here this would be delta t2 this is delta t3 delta t4 5 6 7 8, 9, 10. So 10 sections of same width, all they have the same width delta t, but we are just labeling it differently. And so what we can do here is we can try and sum up the areas of these rectangles. We know how to calculate the area of a rectangle, right? And we have 10 rectangles here. So let's just find the area of these, the sum of the areas of these 10 rectangles. And that will give us some approximation for the area, for the blue shaded area. So, so if we do that, we know that the width for this one would be delta t1, delta t2, delta t3. So if we, if we look at the first, if you look at the first rectangle, if you figure out the area of this one, we know that the width is delta t1 and, and this and the length, this would be, this could be, this could be v1 average, average v1 because we are figuring out the velocity over a finite time interval, right? That is delta t1. And we know that average velocity. We know that average velocity, this was this was given by delta x divided by delta t. So for a finite time interval, you get average velocity. For a finite delta t1, your average velocity is v1 average. And similarly for delta t2, it would be v2 average. Delta t3, v3 average, so on and so forth till delta t10. So now we know the area of this, let's say this red shaded rectangle, that is v1 average into delta t1 and we can add all of these rectangles so when we do that this is how this is how it could look like v1 average into delta t1 plus till v10 average into delta t10 we can write it more uh, like in a compact manner this is a very long way of writing it so let's do that we can we can give a general i to show one two three so v i average into delta t i here i could be one two three four and to show that we can add a sigma sign so i i starts from one and goes till 10 and we are adding all of that this is the sum of the areas of all of these rectangles now what we can do is we can get better and better approximations of the area that we are calculating because we can see that the area of the rectangles in this case it's it's missing out on some parts it's missing out missing out this region missing out this region this region this region is not being included in the total area so one way to one way to deal with it is to increase the number of rectangles or the sections that you're dividing the the blue shaded area in so if we do that let's say if we make 20 if we make if we divide it in 20 sections if you make 20 rectangles something something like something like let's say we divide we divide this then then we divide this so we'll have to rub off i mean we divide this so basically we have we'll we are now dividing it into 20 sections let me show you how a couple of rectangles would look like so that you get some idea so if we are making if you are making 20 such rectangles this is how thin they could look like and now now we are adding we are we are adding 20 of such 20 of such rectangles so we can change this we can change this to 20 and now you're getting a better approximation of the area because you see these smaller triangles now you're taking care of some of them not entirely the approximation is somewhat better for the area not perfect but still somewhat better if you if you make 30 or 40 or 50 such sections of the shaded area then you will keep on getting better and better approximations and if you kept on making this interval of delta t smaller and smaller if you keep on adding more and more sections 
you're just getting better and better approximations so let's first make it more general let's say we have n we have n number of such sections such rectangles and if you keep on decreasing delta t if you keep on making it thinner and thinner so that you get an infinite number of sections in this rectangle that happens when n that will happen when n approaches infinity so that is how we can write it the variable n is approaching infinity delta t is infinitely thin and you have infinite number of sections in this blue shaded area so that can give you a great approximation because it's much better than 10 20 30 it's now you have infinite number of sections or rectangles this is your displacement the blue shaded area and now since delta t has approached zero delta t has almost approached zero this is now almost zero we can move from the notion of average velocity and towards instantaneous velocity because that's what instantaneous velocity was right instantaneous velocity is the velocity at one particular time instant that happens when delta t is almost zero so we can remove the average part of from over here and when we do that this is all that remains the instantaneous velocity into delta t i and this notion of getting better and better approximations as n approaches infinity this is the core this is the core basic idea of integral calculus and we call it integral because the operator that we use to represent this it looks like this this is called an integral this right here this right here tells you the area under the vt graph from the limit t i to t f and here v is really a function of time this could be any function of time it could it could be 2 t square plus 3 5 t cube plus 4 it could be it could be really anything it's just a function of time so whenever we do come across this this integral of v dt from some time limits it basically means the area under the vt curve from the limit ti till the limit tf